Yeah, Alima Dirk. Welcome everybody to the Aga Khan Social Welfare Board's Parent Support Group webinar. Today, we are talking about how to support your child with communication through rich language encounters. We are lucky enough to have Shalina Mitta with us today to run this session. Shalina is an experienced speech and language therapist with over 30 years experience. She is currently working in a college. She has also had several publications and she is a senior tutor for the Makaton charity. Today, Shalina will be taking us through a model on how to support your child with communication. Over to you, Shalina. Uh, it's lovely to be asked to do this, especially because I get a lot of inspiration from parents and I know how resourceful um, parents are, especially when they have additional challenges to uh, address. And um, it, it's always a wealth of knowledge and experience that um, they can give to each other. So I, I feel like to be brought into this is uh, very humbling um, because I'm the one who's often learning from parents. Um, over the years, um, there are some tried and tested uh, tips in developing children's speech and language, which is my background, um, that really help uh, develop children's, not just their speech, but their language and their communication. And um, because this is a very general um, audience where um, I I'm not dealing with a specific child's individual needs, I'm going to address a broad range of um, a spectrum of needs um, through a model that I find very useful and I've shared with parents before. Um, it, it comes from a model that was designed by a teacher who was a religious education teacher but was teaching um, to children with special needs a long time ago and this model just seems to apply at all levels. So I'm going to share screen and show you and the first thing um, in this is just get the first base of the pyramid is encounters, then awareness, engagement, participation, and then we get to initiation. So I'm going to start with the first base of this pyramid. Um, so at the base, what we need our children to be doing is having lots of broad experiences and encountering a very language rich environment. They need to have an environment where they can explore, learn through play, learn through modeled language, uh, multi-sensory encounters. So the encounters, actually without the encounters, we don't get very far. So um, even right from very early stages of language learning, uh, we try and in encounter uh, lots of multi-sensory stimuli and we need to bring those into our children's environment whether they're visual auditory or kinesthetic which are the three primary channels for learning but there are other sensory uh, channels as well there's vestibular and there's proprioceptive which are the other two senses and recently um, uh, they have uh, found uh, another sense which is interoception which is about how your body feels inside. But the encounters are about what we can give to our children through their experiences. So the first step, step, and that's what we can control for our children, is to provide those rich experiences. And it's the experiences and the environment that creates the medium for language learning. It creates the motivation, it creates the purpose, and it creates the participation to start happening. So often when children um, are stuck, we say, well, introduce a bit of novelty or a bit of variety, and you'll often find something or another in the encounter that worked. Maybe it was a light up um, stimulus, maybe it was a sound stimulus, maybe it was a tactile stimulus. So you can start with very little babies, or you can start with children who've got very, um, additional special needs as well, you can start at any stage. At a higher level, obviously, your encounters are going to be more complex encounters. When you do that, it's so vital for a parent to be so closely observing and attentive to the effect of that encounter and notice all the child's responses. And then 
from that you can see which ones are they more aware of which what are they showing more awareness to are they showing more interest and um, awareness of you know different things maybe they're, they're not so attentive to the sound stimuli sound stimuli but more to the visual or more to the tactile kinesthetic stimuli or maybe they're more attentive to the musical stuff and every child has different motivators so the parent and the therapist's first um, task is to identify a child's key motivators um, because it's the motivators that they show greatest awareness to that will lead to their engagement within um, a two-way interaction. Communication cannot happen without it being two-way. That's where engagement comes in. So they receive a stimulus and then they start showing awareness and then they there's a difference between awareness and engagement because engagement is where they still they're attentive, they focus, and they can shift gaze from one thing to another thing and back and, and maintain their interest in something. And that's what's called engagement. Even if they're passive at that stage, engagement is where they are really absorbing it and, and are interested in what they're being shown and they're staying with it. The next level is participation, where after being engaged for a while, they start taking turns. Now, this is uh, the basis of two-way communication. Without turn-taking, you're not going to have any opportunity for modeling and then a reciprocation of that modeling. So a child gets a sense of expectation of what to do when the parent models in a two-way interaction. The parent might be modeling the language that's appropriate for that and the child will then understand how to respond in their term and have a model to emulate. So participation is a critical part of speech and language development and shows that actually communication is two-way. Again, this can happen at all stages of development, whether it's very early stages of communication, in which case approaches like um, intensive interaction um, could be classed at this stage where a child is participating with the adult, whether the parent or the therapist, or it could be at a very high level social skills um, activity where there's a participation going on, but the parent is modeling the expected behaviors and then the child is actually joining in with that and learning it and through that it's shaping their own skills and abilities in communication. After that comes the stage which we are all aspiring to, in which the, the young person begins to initiate their own communication at the level that they are able to. So it could be that um, you know they go and they request something or they comment on something or they ask a question or they refuse something or have an assertion over something because that's an important skill. At this level, whether it's very early language development where a child is actually now initiating and even gesturing to say, I want something, that's initiation. So what we're trying to get, and that's why this is a very broad model and, and apply to all abilities, um, is for that have to happen at the high stage where, where our hope is that our children will initiate more. They will be active communicators, not passive repeat, recipients of language, but using language for a variety of purposes, for a variety of functions, and get all their needs met. So um, in a functioning environment, um, they will be participating and controlling what they need to have an environment for themselves in which they can flourish. Um, amongst all these stages, we have different types of AAC, what we call alternative and augmentative communication strategies. Um, and from the beginning, as I said, um, you know, the encounters provides the medium through which you can introduce the language and then build the child's awareness and engagement gradually through participation to initiation. You can intro introduce lots of AAC um, strategies of using um, visuals, picture symbols, Makaton signing. Um, you can use text, 
single word text, photographs, objects, and make, uh, make the language much more accessible, simplified, reduced, and modified to the right level for the child. Um, there's a Chinese proverb, which I really stick by, which is that I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. And it's through doing and participating in two-way activities that children begin to understand the purpose of communication. So make communication much more visual, make it much more doing things together, um, activity-based learning, introduce new activities and um, the variety, the novelty and the stimulus. And then within that, you can use various types of AAC, such as visual timetables, um, picture exchange communication system, Mackerton signing, which should be, do, be done throughout um, all levels. Um, and you can do um, aided language stimulation with visual core vocabulary boards. And then you can even for children who've got much higher level language or uh, reduced or limited speech and language, transfer to iPads with communication boards and grids on them. So um, this model can kind of give you a, a sort of a framework as to how to progress with your child, identify their level and to have goals that you can set with the specific AAC tools that will apply for them. Thank you. Thank you, Shalina, for taking us through that model, uh, which, like you said, can apply to um, a child at whatever level they're at. Um, so we appreciate you taking us through that. And now, as Shalina mentioned, you as parents are the experts. So we'd love to hear from you some of the solutions that have worked for you, um, because then we, that way we could learn from each other. Thank you. Thank you, Shaheen.